So, um, my talk is about some metrics and it's about um, basically uh, moving towards new way of evaluating research based on the output yeah. This yeah. is, I am um, from the Long Beach Institute at the University. Uh, this is the research work which I've done to get uh, and we uh, have some details at the URL uh, below some metrics that are important if you are interested. So, what is this work about? Uh, in, actually, yesterday, uh, we have just have, uh, provided an announcement of uh, the report which, on which we worked, uh, which was trying to investigate um, uh, how we can make use of the full text to, uh, in research assessment activities. And you can find that at the link below um, a blog post about it, and the full report is available, which is called towards full text based research metric, exploring semantic metrics and is available at the link at the bottom. So this is just to give you the context of the work. Um, what is this about? As you might know, there is a wide range of metrics that are currently used for evaluation of research. Um, they are not, um, they are, the problem is that they are, most of them are, used, are based on citation counting. And um, uh, there is a number of, uh, of them that are kind of um, Created using the citations as a, uh, as a, uh, as a basis of the information. Uh, they include the uh, index, they include the journal, okay, um, and so on. Uh, they, one of the advantages of, this, of, of these metrics is that they are very simple. It's very simple to calculate um, citations, and this is why I believe they are very successful. Um, well, they've been quite successful and penetrated the market. But um, they have a lot, of, a lot of problems as well. And the main problem is that there is an insufficient evidence that they actually capture quality and research contribution. They are ad hoc, and I would argue that they have been established completely axiomatically by saying, okay, this is, this is how we calculate research impact, but there has been no kind of data-driven uh, validation that they actually <laughs> correspond to quality. We don't see that as um, there is also a crisis of, of research evaluation, or I would argue that there is one. Um, what we see at the moment is that we have uh, uh, we have the peer review system, and in the peer review system, uh, if, I would expect that if citations were a good uh, 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 an indicator of quality, then we would probably expect peer review good peer review systems to. Uh, uh, lead to publish the, to the publication of papers with higher citation counts. And what we see here is uh, the graph which shows the rejection rate on the x-axis and the impact factor of the journal on the y-axis. And as you might imagine, there is absolutely no correlation between them. Uh, what does it say? That, that means basically that either there is a problem with the peer review or there is a problem with the citation counting measures. I would argue that there's probably a little bit of a problem with both of them. And, um, and, and that's probably what brings us to where we are at the moment. So what are the problems of correct impact metrics which are based on citations? Sentiment, semantics, contents and motives. Um, sentiment is not taken into account. We just count the name citation. We just count the citations. Popularity <coughs> and size of research communities is not taken into account. We don't take into account time delays because it takes a lot of time or it takes a differing amount of time for different types of publications to pick up in terms of citations. Uh, there's a skewness of the distribution. I'm not sure if you are aware of it, but citations are uh, an example of a long tail distribution where we have a few, a few papers uh, that have basically most, uh, most of the citations, get most of the citations, but the majority of the papers get very little. Uh, there are also differences in types of research papers. So, for example, we know that survey papers get, on average, a lot more citations than um, uh, applied research. And the problem, obviously, with that is that we can argue that survey papers don't really introduce new ideas. So, why do we treat them as the, you know, as, as, as very good as having a massive scientific impact? Um, and, and there's also um, a significant problem is that the ability to, 
game and manipulate citations as it has been shown <coughs> quite a few times before. So uh, what we have in addition are these days alternative metrics or sometimes we call them bubble metrics. And what they say is that the impact is, uh, what we know that is the impact is still dependent on the number of interactions in the scholarly communication network, which means numbers of downloads, numbers of views, numbers of readers, numbers of tweets. And um, it can be, it is probably the case that this somehow corresponds to the level of popularity of certain things. So I'm not arguing that we shouldn't measure them, but we should not probably associate them necessarily with research quality. So um, what, uh, the idea which, uh, comes, which, which is here um, is basically comes from uh, the observation that uh, what we do is we take what we consider in research assessment are just, uh, it's just information about uh, which is outside of the paper itself. But um, you would probably see, um, you, you can probably see why, or I find it really crazy that what we don't consider in research evaluation at the moment is the paper itself. Because the paper itself is obviously the most important thing. So why don't we take it into account? So semantometrics are all about taking into account the article full text. And um, why, why semantometrics happen now? I think the reason why, um, it, why it happens now is that in the past we were not having access to the full text. The access was um, we had maybe access to abstracts and, and access to the content was, was not available. And with the open access movement, we are seeing uh, 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 the creation of a new opportunity for actually utilizing the manuscript itself for the research evaluation um, uh, uh, performance or information research evaluation. So, uh, there are many possibilities for semantometrics. And, and you can be detecting good research, and, uh, you can be detecting good research practices, uh, how they are followed, whether some methodology was followed, research data code was shared. You can look at detecting paper types, you can analyze citation context, uh, how, for example, see how facts propagate through the research network. So if there is a good paper, you can, for example, we would imagine that the paper introduces some ideas which are picked up and then reused by other researchers. And that can be uh, an evidence of, of, of really interesting uh, ideas of, of useful content being provided to the research community. You can detect sentiment or citations. For example, if someone is criticizing some content, um, then this probably shouldn't be counted in the same way as if someone is praising some content. Um, obviously, even the bibliometricians say that normalizing by size of community is important and detecting good writing styles might also be important. And these are, many of these things are something which we can do at the moment already with text and data mining uh, methods. Now, what I'd like to say is that in our experiment study, we didn't have time to explore all these areas. And we focused on one particular, very, very simple idea. And that's the, the idea is something which we call the contribution metric. Having said that, um, the contribution metric should not be seen as, should be seen as an example of what is possible to do. But uh, by all means, we need, what, what my argument is that we need to study a broad range of semantometric measures um, to understand how they, um, uh, to, to understand what they actually mean. And, 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 and see, see them work in practice. And we need to evaluate, again, real data before introducing some uh, research metrics. So if you want to see how semantometrics work, I would suggest you to go uh, to the semantometrics or there we have a detailed formula and a demonstrator uh, where you can actually understand how um, the contribution metric works. What is, it is based on the hypothesis that the added value of the publication P can be estimated based on the semantic distance from the publication cited by P to the publications that are cited. What does it mean? It means that P, the publication, creates a bridge between what was known in the past to something new. So basically changes the discussion, then this is a good publication. So the more you change, the, the research, the, 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 the more you change the content of what your research community is talking about, the better your publication. Okay? That's the um, in, intuition behind that metric. And it is measured by uh, using the full text. 
and by uh, basically calculating the semantic distance between the publications you cite you and the publications, uh, sorry, the publications you cite and the publications that will cite you in the future. And really, as I said, a detailed explanation at the link um, below. Um, so, this is what I just said. Um, the cited publications, um, they correspond to the state of the art in the domain of the publication in question. And the citing publications probably, or in many situations, corresponds to the areas of application of the research. Uh, this is an example. So this is an example of the below and above average publication. So on the left side, um, you can see uh, so the, 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 the blue notes correspond to uh, the papers which uh, cite, uh, which my publication cites, and the red notes uh, correspond to the papers which cite my publication. And the spread is representative of the distance between these papers. So if we have a large spread, then these articles come from different areas. If they are close together, they are from one particular research area. And um, why, so, so, the, uh, so on the left side, you can see a paper which has a low contribution because it influences, it, it takes information from a broad range of areas, but influences only a very, very small um, community. Whereas the paper um, uh, on the right side is an example of a paper which you know takes info, which uses research from diverse areas um, and influences a large area. Okay, and this is what we consider good in the sense of the contribution metric. <laughs> so, how did we do our experiment? We have obtained uh, a, a new data set by merging three openly accessible data sets. The first data set is the data set of open access publications from CORE, C O R E. Second data set is Microsoft Academic Graph, 120 <coughs> million metadata items with more than 500 million citation, um, citation links, citation pairs, freely available since, uh, since 2015. And we also use the Mendeley uh, API to get obtained publication texts, or more precisely abstracts, to um, get information about all these papers. Because the reality is that um, even though we have core, we could not. The papers which are in core often cite papers which are subscription based, and they are also cited by many papers which are subscription based. So for the papers which we couldn't get access, full text access to, we use abstracts only, and that is a limitation of our study, which we understand. But we can, can, we couldn't without that we couldn't go further. So just to give you an example um, of the data set, we basically by merging this data set, we have one and. Um, one and more than one half million articles from the core, which are matched or merged with the Microsoft Academic Graph dataset to get information about the citations. And we use um, the average number of received citations for a given paper is 60, which is very high for bibliometric, um, for bibliometric um, data sets. It's one of the highest I have seen. And uh, that, that indicates that it is a very good data set for studying these problems. Um, it has um, also um, it has the average readership, the Mendeley readership of, of, of a typical article in the data set is about 16. So, so there are papers which are, and obviously there is quite a high uh, standard deviation in that, but that still indicates it's a it's a it's a data set which is quite um, which, which is quite good. It contains good papers and it contains also uh, less uh, performing papers. And overall, if we take these 1.5 million papers and we take the papers which they cite and the papers that are citing these 1.5 million articles, we get about 12 million articles. And this is the this is the data set on which we carried, uh, on which we um, calculated or did these experiments. Um, you might be interested to see that um, we just wanted to check that the uh, that the, uh, the distribution of citations and readership is. Uh, representative of what we know from the bibliometric studies and indeed it is because we can see long tail distributions for both citation counts and readership. So on the x-axis you have uh, publications and you have, the, sorry, you, on the y-axis you have number of publications and on the x-axis you have the number of citations or the um, readership um, of, um, of uh, publications. And with the contribution metric you can see that this is a slightly different distribution. It resembles a normal distribution. 
and um, um, uh, uh, why is that? We believe that um, this might be more representative of, um, of quality, um, uh, perhaps. Uh, it's not a strong claim because uh, obviously uh, to show, to demonstrate this is uh, in terms of data very difficult. But uh, um, it should be taken into account. This reason is normal distribution. Normal distributions are sometimes better for uh, in companies. Use the companies often use them, for example, for evaluating the performance of their workforce. So um, uh, I would argue, actually, and some people might argue together with me that normal distributions might be better for evaluating the performance of researchers, of individual people. They might be better than long-tail distribution because in long-tail distributions you have a few stars and everybody, everybody else is below average, and that's probably not representative because the few stars are basically taking, you know, massive amounts of citations. So, so this can be, uh, uh, especially when you then create aggregate measures of performance, this can be um, uh, an advantage. Uh, just to validate that uh, the data set again is, is representative, we also tried to uh, capture the uh, correlation between citations and readerships and indeed that corresponds to what we kind of expect. Uh, there is about 0 0.3 uh, correlation coefficient between citations and readership. However, what we figured out is that there was no direct correlation between the contribution measure which we, in, which we um, created and citations readership. And when working through, and that was a little bit of a disappointment from the start. But then we looked into, we started working through mean citations and readership and mean readership and contribution values, and we tried to, and we saw um, uh, certain trends that emerged. Um, so all these data um, uh, basically are. Um, so what we looked into is that uh, we, for example, um, on the left side you can see citations on the x-axis and contribution values on the y-axis. And what we can see is the growing number of citations, actually the contribution, um, the average contribution rises. Um, and that is something which we would kind of a little bit expect. Um, and um, and um, um, you can, um, uh, you, can, you, can, you can see that um, on, the, on, on the right side that also the contribution um, increases, sorry, the, the main citations increases with, um, uh, <coughs> sorry, that's contribution and citations. So, so that you can see the river rising contribution, you can see the mean citations increase as well. And um, uh, the other graph shows us uh, we plotted readership and, um, and contributions. And you can see that with the growing readership, we have, we are getting a higher <coughs> contribution. And the a growing contribu contribution, but uh, the other graph shows something slightly different. So <coughs> how do we interpret this data? Um, there, is one, um, there is one slight uh, setback, which is that the, on the left side, you can see zero readership, and, and the three first columns are zero readership. And this is because we didn't get readership data, so you can discard these three columns. But uh, what we could see is that it means uh, that the contribution in general was growing with a higher, um, with higher uh, readership. Um, the problem is that we were speculating why it is the case that for the mean it was working, and these all these um, uh, graphs which I show you here are statistically um, produce statistically significant um, uh, results. But the um, uh, but the previous ones, um, when we were calculating only uh, like a direct correlation, we were not taking into account the means. It was not working, and um, we believe that this is due to the. Um, differences in types of scientific articles. So for example, survey papers are all completely, um, um, they, they, we know that survey papers are, are based probably uh, creating a problem for us because they are highly cited often and they don't really, um, they should not perform well under the contribution metric assumptions because, contrib because survey papers don't bring new knowledge. They just talk about the state of the art. And the contribution metric is trying to, what it's trying to capture is, um, um, is uh, uh, how you progress um, in, in terms of the community. So I think that's, um, that's important um, to mention. Okay, also what we can see is that the contribution measure is 
as this, uh, is, as this growing until, let's say, 0 0.91, um, the leadership is growing, but not, not further than that. Uh, uh, we, we believe that this might be due to the problems, uh, uh, might be due to the fact that um, the sum papers um, might be very new and they can have a very good contribution, but um, the, re the readership didn't accumulate yet. It, the paper didn't have the chance to receive sufficient readership on Mendeley, and, this, and, and, and that makes sense because the, um, the, si the semantometric measures require only one citation to be able to produce a value, and the value shouldn't change that much in the future. Uh, but uh, obviously we know that citation measures and readership measures, they grow over time. So what is the difference between existing input metrics and semantic metrics? So um, citation center and semantics content and motives are not a problem for semantic metrics. Because actually semantic metrics, if we have the full text, we can account for it. Popularity and size of communities is not a problem because we use averages, and you can, uh, the, re the reason why we use averages is, uh, is something you can find on our website. We, they don't have a problem with time delays, uh, they don't have a problem with skewness of the citation distribution, because they are globally distributed. Um, they also don't have a problem with manipulation of the metrics, because basically what is evaluated in the end is the full text itself. Um, so there is no space for for basically, uh, for basically um, gaming citations, because by increasing the number of citations, you're not going to increase your contribution. You will only increase your contribution if you change some, if you change how your community acts in the future. Um, what we did in the future, and uh, in, a, in addition to this, and that, that this is like the second part of the talk, is that we try to look into aggregated metrics. Aggregated metrics are, for example, H index. So they are, these are metrics which uh, take into account um, uh, sets of articles. And um, they encourage, um, and basically what, uh, what we wanted to avoid is that H index, for example, says that uh, your H index is five, if you have five publications, you have at least five citations. This was completely, this was established completely axiomatically. No, without any kind of reference to whether this is a good measure or not. And we were looking into what would be a better aggregation approach for, let's say, the contribution metric that they can eat in the same way be applied to citation-based metrics. And we came up with this, um, with this uh, function, which can be a little bit more representative. What it basically says is that we look for uh, your best N publications, or best uh, D publications, and then we basically calculate the average on your, on, on your best publications. It doesn't have to be five, it doesn't have to be seven. It, can be, it, it basically looks into your, kind of, it calculates kind of your best H index, the best you can have based on the contribution um, So, what is the problem with the existing research metrics? Um, and the approaches to design for design. The problem is that you don't really have ground truth, you don't have human judgments, and there are many facets of performance. Um, the facets are societal impact, economic impact, rigor, originality, novelty. And I think, I believe we need different measures for capturing these different aspects. Um, so with the example of the contribution metric, it's just one facet. It's not, it doesn't tell us the whole story. We need multiple things, but we need to evaluate them against human judgments. And I think that's a problem with the existing citation metrics. So what I find very important is there is the competitions like the Wisdom Cup, which happened last year which is about working on the, development, on the development of new metrics. What the Wisdom Cup did is that Microsoft Academic Graph was made available to everyone openly, and there was a set of human judgments um, on each article, which were not known to the participants of the Wisdom Cup. A Wisdom Cup is a competition, so there were about 35 uh, teams which participated into the competition, trying to find new, um, uh, trying to develop new research impact metrics and we participated in the competition and we ended up between the, among the finalists of the, um, of the event and, and, and that was um, based on, um, on, 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 the, on the human judgments and evaluation. But there was no full text, there is no full text in the Microsoft Academy Graph and that is a problem for um, 
using uh, for benchmarking similar metrics. So what we've done in later was that we actually, uh, with, with, with the work we've done with the contribution measure, we've created um, uh, actually a data set by connecting minus two kilogram core and Mendeley data so that people can have one data set where they get both full text and bibliographic information as well as altmetric information. So actually three types of data, altmetrics, bibliometrics, and full text. And I think what we would like um, to do here is we would like to encourage uh, people who are interested in the community to use this data set um, for creating new scientometric measures basically, and play with them, evaluating them against human judgment. So uh, let me just conclude. Um, so what I believe is important is the important message from this is that we believe that full text is necessary to research evaluation. Contribu the contribution metric was just one example of something that can be done very easily with um, full text and bibliometric data together. But there is much more that can be done. We can be tracking how facts are propagated through the research. <coughs> the what we need are is access to full text of research papers unrestricted access to um, all research papers, more precisely. What we're doing is that we're studying one semantometric method to assess the research contribution, but as I say, we want to um, come, um, we want to start working on many different aspects and trying to evaluate various kind of facets of research and uh, of research assessment. We have now um, secured some funding um, and we will be um, doing some research uh, on this using the HEFCREF dataset. So basically that's a dataset um, which contains from all the UK REF panels, so research evaluation framework exercise panels, um, um, the, the, the judgments or the peer review judgments of the committees. And we'll try to check how uh, the metrics we develop um, are um, corresponding to these peer review judgments. And this is, um, this is a really new approach to metrics because at the moment uh, all uh, people I know uh, who are working or, or all companies that are working on research metrics uh, axiomatically take the fact that citations are representative of impact or downloads are representative of impact. But the correspondence of peer review, ju to peer review judgments is non-existent. And um, so um, uh, what I really want to emphasize here is that what we need is, uh, is a data-driven approach for evaluating um, research metrics um, uh, and, um, and, that's, um, and, and we need uh, probably competitions such as the Wisdom Cup to, to bring together a community of people who are interested in actually trying something new and demonstrating that it works. Thank you very much.